Hey, everybody. I am Richard Ruane, the creator of Moonlight on Roseville Beach, and I am so glad to uh, kind of welcome you here for this demo video. Uh, I've got three great players with me today, but I did want to let you guys know that uh, Roseville Beach is live on Kickstarter right now. Uh, you can see the uh, URL, uh, quick link, right down at the very bottom. I think I'm pointing uh, there, there, right? Sorry, there. Uh, right there at the very bottom. Uh, this is this is a really professional. Uh, you can tell I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an expert at pointing to things on screen, uh, and uh, I'm really glad to uh, get this game out and get it to you. And I am joined by three awesome players today. We're going to do a quick demo of character creation, and y'all can wave at the screen uh, now. And uh, we're going to do a quick demo of sort of character creation, and we'll kind of do a little bit of a demo of how the rules work and how the rules play. Uh, we'll show off the uh, the quick digital tools, which we uh, built using uh, Mamato's directions on kind of building digital tools in Google Sheets and talk a little bit about the quick start. Um, but uh, I'm really glad to be joined today by um, three people who I have gotten the privilege of playing with multiple times in multiple different games. Um, and I am going to start uh with uh daryl ross uh uh who i have played with fairly often lately uh since we started the series of russian good society games uh, a couple of years ago and uh daryl why don't uh, you introduce yourself and then tell us a little about dennis the character you'll be playing yeah thanks hi uh i'm daryl my pronouns are they them and i am playing dennis k whose pronouns are he him uh so dennis is uh his origin story is the scandalous uh currently he is a bartender at rosie's um but he has a, another background as a political aide and then another background as an aspiring academic uh the reason he's currently slinging drinks at the local watering hole though is because uh he has made his way to roseville beach this summer because uh he got a little bit tangled up in a potentially indiscreet relationship with a uh, boss figure and then ended up getting plastered all over the gossip rags as a politician's rent boy uh thanks to a quick connection i have with somebody who's a known fixer i was able to pick up stakes and uh, migrate my way over to roseville beach uh to try to like lay low and let things cool off before i figure out what my next move is nice nice um i think next we're gonna go across my screen uh and check in with lisa uh lisa you and i have gotten to play together at several different conventions we're in a home game together uh by our friend kat raman who is also one of the uh, authors on the uh, roseville beach kickstarter uh lisa go ahead and introduce yourself and uh and uh tell us a little about your character uh sure I'm Lisa, she, her pronouns. I'm playing Walker Ryan, he, him pronouns. Um, he's a crow shifter, um, has a little bit of trouble with gold and with daybreak kind of forcing the change, um, and has a little bit of trouble with one agent, Lane Davis, who's got serious connections and is looking for him because, well, he can turn into a crow so uh that's why he's laying low uh at roseville beach and what are your backgrounds you're a crow shifter and are you what what kind of place are you from there out in the country nice okay all right uh thank you lisa and i think the person who has play tested more variations on roseville beach in its in its two-year history than anybody else Kay. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kay, and I use she, they pronouns. And today I'll be playing our fresh face. His name is Warwick Ravenswood, but uh, everyone else really knows him as Ward Woods. He has backgrounds as a clergy kid and a sports hero. He's 20 years old. Uh, he's currently working as vocal backing at Fleur Manor. And he's in Roseville Beach because... Um, well, he comes from a sort of a politically Republican, Southern savvy family, and he uh, ran away from a prearranged marriage that they were going to have to another well-connected family and uh, 
trying to figure himself out, managed to uh, hitchhike his way to somewhere where he thought he could look more into his own personal questioning. But while he's there, he's going by Ward Woods because uh, Monsignor Pruitt is looking for him and is trying to bring him back into the flock of their church and his Republican family. Wow. All right. So sort of from the nice kid in the church choir to the, the nice kid singing back up for a drag review. Yep. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Uh, I'm going to shift our layout a little there so you guys can get a little more screen presence. Um, and we're going to do a quick section called Strange Events. Strange Events is kind of the last phase of character creation. And it sort of brings our housemates together. All three of these, Dennis, uh, Ward, and uh, Walker, have been living together since the start of summer uh, when they sort of rented a bungalow. Uh, and we'll talk about a bungalow in just a second too. But I want to talk about uh, how the three of you, after a few weeks of living together, each discovered the weird, strange uh, events that happened on Roseville Beach. You all came out to Roseville Beach to uh, to get away from your everyday lives. Uh, back there, I know that uh, uh, Dennis and uh, Ward uh, were uh, each involved. And I think we lost Lisa, but we'll be right back uh, with Lisa. Uh, and I'll pull Lisa back on in uh, just a second. But uh, Dennis and Ward, uh, uh, you had a strange event walking together. Add you back, Lisa, back in the stream. Hey, uh, but Dennis and Ward, you had a uh, a strange event sort of happen together, uh, and uh, that's a, a a weird one. Dennis, what was happening? What happened? Uh, what did you notice that sort of alerted you to the fact that things on Roseville Beach were not what they might seem at first? Yeah, so you know, I was uh, walking on the beach with my uh, new roommate Ward, and uh, as we were going about uh, our journey, uh, the two of us saw a strange bronze monolith that was always just right behind us, uh, but we never saw it move. And like we would look, and it would be like right there, and then we'd move away a little bit, and then we'd look, and it'd be right there again. And you know, that's that's definitely strange because monoliths don't move, at least not where I'm from. So, yeah. Certainly not where uh, where Ward is from either. Yeah. Where was, and I think this is mostly a question for Dennis, where was the place that you last saw the monolith before you turned back around and it wasn't there anymore? Yeah, so uh, the place that I think that we saw it was probably um, right near the harbor. Um, I think that we were probably walking along the harbor and uh, it was there and then it wasn't. I'll, I'll ask both of you, did you pass people you knew that night or was it a pretty quiet night in town early in the summer or did you pass people you knew? Well, I think it was a pretty quiet night because I'd gotten there just as the season was about to start. And yeah. uh, I don't think that many people have come in just yet. Nice. Okay. So you, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I uh, think it was quiet. I think we had chosen this location because it was quiet. It hadn't picked up. You know, the people that were newly there were not necessarily being beach bums, but were perhaps partying and getting back into the scene of welcoming everyone at the bars or events. And we chose this as a, a quiet place to sort of just keep to our thoughts and get to know each other. So, yeah, you were standing on the harbor and that was the last place you saw the strange monolith. Uh, what I'd like the both of you to do is uh, go ahead and uh, roll that d6, just a single d6. I got a six. I got a five. Excellent. I think both of you get to pick one extra skill uh, from this list that uh, you sort of got from, you could have picked up from the, from a, this first supernatural encounter, at least it became obvious that you had it during the super first supernatural encounter. Are you stubborn, strong, or are you good at subterfuge? Uh, I think Ward is strong. I think perhaps there's a moment that he realized this where the uh, monolith was edging, just nipping at their heels. And he was getting so close to Dennis and 
Instead, Ward placed a hand on it and just pushed and managed to actually shove the monolith back a few feet. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you, Dennis? Uh, Dennis is very skilled in subterfuge um, and finding ways to like outsmart things or people or monoliths. Uh, <laughs> the last time we saw it was actually because we did a little bit of a quick trick where uh, we were at the edge of the harbor and then turned around so that it was behind us and in the water. Interesting. No splash, but uh, definitely was no longer behind you. Uh, very interesting. Uh, and uh, Dennis and Ward specifically, have you seen the monolith since then? I think Ward hasn't caught it behind him exactly, but he keeps glimpsing it in like the corner of his periphery. Like there'll be moments where he's working or something, he'll look out a window and he won't like see it directly in the window. But the corner of like it, they'll just have an edge. Nice, nice. Uh, and I think that uh, brings us over to uh, Ward. Mm -hmm. uh, Warwick secretly, but Ward publicly. Uh, fresh face on Roseville Beach, definitely pretty young. Uh, and Got a, came out and got a job as a backup dancer. What was the strange thing that happened between you and your housemate, Walker? So I think Walker had done me a kindness and picked me up after my first shift at the Fleur Manor. I was mm -hmm. sort of, you know, a little, you know, giddy and, and maybe I'd actually been given a drink or two by the sisters that I probably shouldn't have had my first few drinks. And suddenly there was a, a shadowy figure that was whispering our names and the scariest part was they weren't calling him ward they were calling him warwick and oh. yeah and it was just absolutely terrifying and ward managed to grab uh walker's hands and they started just running uh i think the question i want to ask you about that real quick uh how would the two of you, and this is specifically for Ward, what was distinctive about that figure that you would see, you would recognize if you saw this figure again? I think the most distinctive thing were its eyes. They were just this deep, vivid violet, which was just mm -hmm. enchantingly beautiful, but wholly unnatural. Especially since it knew you're the person mm -hmm. or the, uh, the, the creature, stranger. person, entity, uh, knew your name. That's yep. very, very strange. Uh, I'd like both of you to roll a d6 real quick and tell me what you get. Three. One. Oh, no. In running away, uh, uh, you both got a, didn't, you didn't trip or hurt yourselves or anything, but I think by the time you both got back to the bungalow, and we'll talk about that bungalow in a second, uh, both of you uh, scared the figure and they uh, pushed someone away uh, who fell off the boardwalk and onto sort of the dune below uh, the boardwalk. You know, this is a sandbar island. Uh, the whole thing is just one big dune. Uh, and so everything is boardwalks to sort of keep people off the dunes, but the, the figure pushed somebody off before jumping off itself into the dune grass and running away. Um, who was that person uh, that you're now sort of keeping an eye out for? Uh, you're, you're both sort of looking out for this person, kind of making oh. sure they don't get hurt again, since you said that you had to pick them up and dust them off. Uh, Are, uh, do we have separate people or the same person? I think it's the one person for, for, for each of you. Uh, okay. But both of you kind of saw it and helped the person out afterwards, maybe. Does that sound good? Sure. I yeah. think what I would like, if you're okay with that, uh, would be, ooh, let's make it fun. Uh, Lady Bracknell. Oh, Gray Bracknell? Lady Gray mm -hmm. Bracknell? Yeah, Lady Gray Bracknell. Owns the sure. big hotel at the edge of town? Yep. Uh, if I had thought, I would... Uh, 
uh, have put together the uh, the image from the the Belvedere Hotel in Cherry Grove that the the Bracknell is heavily influenced by. Uh, but it's a big old you know beautiful old Art Deco building uh, right at the edge of town. Uh, definitely the most pricey place to stay on the island, but one of the more popular places because it's a kind of a, a destination. Uh, and so you're sort of keeping an eye out for Gray Bracknell uh, since uh, you saw this figure actually hurt her, uh, uh, whether intentionally or not. Um, um, again, where on the sheet do we note this? All right, you're going to note it under Troubles People You're Looking Out For. Ah. Uh, uh, and I'll preview that sheet when we come back in a, in a, in a little bit. Okay. Uh, uh, but uh, go ahead and pop it into People I'm Looking Out For. Uh, and those are people you're sort of taking care of. You you feel a sense of responsibility for there on the island. Uh, all right. And finally, I think we're going to do that last strange event. And this happened to Walker when you were out with Dennis one night. And what what was it that happened? Uh, I'll, let um, you, I'll let you I'll let you sort of describe the basic event uh, just from that quick one. I think you picked shark people. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, we were walking on the beach, you know, just having a moment, you know, with the stars and the water and everything was just nice. And then there were these shark like creatures attacking somebody we'd never seen before. Um, who was that? Is that someone you knew from town or was it somebody who was a stranger? Uh, definitely a stranger. All right. Let me pull up my name generator for the name they gave you afterwards. Uh, but let's start by uh, the two of you rolling that D6 one last time. One. Three. Uh, three. You guys are such socially responsible people because mm -hmm. both Walker and Dennis are looking out for a uh, kind of a a young guy named Sean Cohen, uh, who's uh, I think working as a uh, as a bar back at one of the nightclubs. Let's say the Cabana. So Sean is both a both, Sean is a both a nice hookup to have for getting into the Cabana. Rumor is that this new singer named Grace Jones is going to be performing at the Cabana in about a in, in a weekend or two. The Cabana never announces who their surprise acts are until day of. Uh, but the rumor on the street or on uh, the rumor on the boardwalk is that uh, it's it's going to be Grace Jones coming to the Cabana in a, in about a week. Uh, but Sean is your hookup at Cabana, but uh, at the Cabana. But Sean is also a person who clearly has at least some propensity for getting into trouble uh and did something to uh provoke or annoy or passively just look uh edible to these shark creatures who came out of the water uh might have just cut himself blood in the water is all it takes right yeah yeah uh, all right and uh let's see uh, what we do next, I think, is I want to ask you just a quick question about your bungalow. Uh, the bungalow is the space the housemates share, and it also sort of is a nice set of you know places to go back and grab supplies, any tools you need. Uh, so my question to you, is this a really nice bungalow? Uh, or is this a, uh, is this a, uh, like, with a lot of privacy, do you have, like, you know, a main bath and a spare bath and a lot of room to kind of spread out? Uh, do you have a little less privacy, a little bit of crowding on the bathroom in the mornings? Uh, or is this just a no privacy situation where you're having to share rooms uh and you don't really have a phone. Kind of describe to me what you're thinking 
the space you were able to rent got uh the simpler the bungalow is the more cramped and less private it is the more likely you are to be able to run back there and grab what you need uh if you uh find yourself in need of a hammer or scuba tanks or uh a, a beach umbrella with an unfortunately sharp top on it uh the more likely you are the simpler and more basic your bungalow is uh what do you think I think it's probably right in the middle. Right I in think the middle? that uh, yeah. Dennis wouldn't want to, like, wouldn't have that much access to funds or anything, so couldn't afford anything super nice. But at the same time, like, privacy is key, so at least would want yeah. his own room. Right. Yeah. I think the middle ground is nice, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if I really need privacy, i probably go up onto the roof, but... You know, it's nice if we're not always in each other's face. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, okay, so I am going to check in with... Uh, so I'm going to uh, mark that. And real quickly, does anybody have an idea for the name of the bungalow? The Crossroads. The crossroads. Huh. How does that sound to everybody else? Yeah. Yep. All right. But you're not too far from the center of town, but you're not so close. You're not so close to the center of town that you get residual nightclub music, which is nice. Um, and uh, I think that gives you a, a nice place to live. We're going to take a real quick pause and then we're going to be back with an opening scene. Hey, everybody, and we are back, and I wanted to just let you know that we have a quick start up. If you are wondering why, about taking a look at the game before you actually pledge or take a look at the Kickstarter page, you can get into the Roseville Beach Quick Start, which is how everybody has built their characters today. Uh, and then the full version will actually have a few more character options, a lot of GM options uh, and GM tools, uh, some mysteries ready to go, and you can take a look at that at the uh, at the uh, Kickstarter page itself. Uh, and I am going to come back with our crew, our housemates here at the uh, crossroads and uh, check in with you guys. You are having a night off. And, and Lisa, I'm going to mute you real quick just because I'm getting a little bit of echo just from the background there. But I will uh, just check in on that. Uh, but uh, you are... Uh, hanging out i think since uh dennis you work at rosie's so does that seem like a good place is that the kind of place you would hang out after work i know it's not uncommon for bartenders especially to hang out sort of afterwards or do you try to avoid entangling with any of your customers afterwards by going somewhere else well, considering there is always the op uh, potential that one of them will recognize me from a magazine, uh, I tend to try to steer clear of the same places consistently. Uh, nice. I am, however, partial to that piano bar that I've recently discovered. Oh, uh, you mean the piano bar at uh, your roommate's workplace, the uh, the Fleur Manor? Uh, whenever uh, they're not doing a drag review, or is it the screw's turn? That so the screw's uh, turn was the one I was thinking of. Mainly just because of the, the very um, like on the nose references from Turn of the Screw, which was amazing. Oh, I read yeah. that and I like had a good moment. Yes, yes, yes. There, there may be oh, some the fairly screw. on the nose references uh, to uh, specific Gothic or Andor uh, pulp novels. And uh, various spaces. I don't know who added them to that. I, 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 <laughs> not, I, I take no responsibility for anything there. Uh, but does uh, hanging out at the uh, Screws Turn on the on night none of you have uh, work sound good? I think so. I think though uh, Ward is a little a little little cock and gun shy there. 
uh, because it's essentially the enemy of where he works. He doesn't necessarily have an issue, but he thinks people may have issue with him. But he's also very oh. much happy. He's very much happy to go wherever Dennis suggests, uh, especially you know if he can make himself slip in because he is technically not twenty one yet. Oh the, no, never mind. Sorry, I keep forgetting that. That's not a thing because I'm. It's nineteen seventy nine. You can. Yeah, you can, he can you drink. Can, uh, yep. You are allowed to drink at eighteen. You're allowed to drink almost, at eighteen. Almost everywhere in the United States, I think, yeah. in 1979. Uh, before yeah, it they changed law. it about the time I turned 18. <laughs> that right. happened to my mom, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So you are at the screw's turn. It is a rollicking good time at the piano bar. Uh, Dennis, since you, you picked, I'm going to ask you, uh, what is the pianist playing tonight? Is it Disney tunes? show tunes or pop hits that uh the crowd is singing boisterously along to uh i think it's show tunes um okay yeah it's, it's got to be something really just like uh flamboyantly fun and that's kind of half the reason he goes because it's like he just wants to get out of his head for a little bit is it is it a specific musical that they are playing through sing along wise or is it just whatever in whatever the pianist decides to play at the moment whatever the pianist decides to play at the moment mainly because right. i don't know that much about show tunes oh yeah i i, I was going to be like i really hope you name a show that i know a song from uh <laughs> because i am i am the worst i am the worst um, new york gay chorus uh, line that was up right then so uh, yeah i think uh uh oh at least i'm stuck give me give me one song from chorus line uh the big one kiss the day goodbye uh, what I did for what I did for love. For, yeah, what I did for love. Uh, Ward Warwick, has your background allowed you to ever hear the soundtrack to Chorus Line before? God no. So <laughs> you may be the only person in the bar who does not know all the words to what I did for love. Uh, uh, how is how is the evening going? Is it uh, Ward? I know that. Uh, you're very new. You're very, yeah. very new. This is and this is your first summer out, and it's your first. Uh, you know, you you've recently escaped getting married, uh, or being sort yeah. of pressured into getting married. Uh, how is the how's the whole uh, piano bar uh, experience like when you you know they shift to musicals that are not the sound of music. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, he's trying so hard to sort of let loose and have fun and try new things, mm -hmm. but it's maybe not the best location for that because he's he's slightly on guard that you know uh, Doug or Peter might show up and and recognize him even though he's sort of hide it sort of not necessarily very front and center at the Fleur Manor, but they might think something's going on there. And then mm -hmm. he doesn't know the, sh the songs anymore. So at first he was able to sort of sing, although he wasn't trying to sing too loud because maybe they'd recognize his voice from the Fleur Manor where he does the backup singing um, for their lip syncing uh, drag queens. And he's just sort of attempting, you know, he hasn't really drank that much given his uh, background. So he's sort of, I think, pressed up against a corner of the bar with like, whatever the fruitiest, sweetest drink is, because Lord knows he cannot handle his alcohol. And, and he's fruity, just- sweetie, drink, Fruity drinks are the worst idea that you always yep. gravitate to when, he, you're fir when you're first new with alcohol. Yep, exactly. Like, oh, a sweet drink would be the best idea. But that just means the they can hide more alcohol idea. in it. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And so he's, he's, he's just sort of in a corner, um, trying to look sort of, Maybe attractive and demure, but but probably just looking really nervous. Um, Dennis, what about you? Is this the uh, this is the piano bar? Uh, they are they are singing a good number of of, of great '70s show tunes. Uh, what are you up to? What's what's the night like for you? Uh, before everything inevitably goes to hell, you know, but what you have a Friday night off with all, all your housemates have a Friday night off, which is not usual. Uh, is there anyone uh, you're looking out for trying to meet, trying to impress here at uh, the screws turn, or is this just a relaxing night out for you? I, 
think it's a relaxing night out. Although um, I'm assuming that Dennis is probably uh, maybe eyeing up one of the uh, piano players. Uh, like, yeah, probably has like put more requests in than is strictly necessary. Well, do you tip with every request too, Dennis? Of course. Yeah, you gotta be. You gotta be memorable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and the yeah the piano player is definitely. Uh, what what was the last song you requested before what I did for love uh, became the thing that everybody was singing along to? Uh, that they've not oh. gotten to yet. Uh, so it was uh, not getting or it's getting married today from company because I know that Flora, the drag queen here, can say all of the words in perfect sync with the music. That is impressive. That's a hard song. Mm -hmm. uh, Flora is, is especially impressive as a, as a drag queen who can carry her own numbers. Frequently does not have to lip sync. Um, and, you know, it's not her 8.30 show, you know, which she doesn't have to do on Friday nights because it's her evening off. But she is here in full regalia singing along with everybody else, uh, even on her night off. Uh, and uh, Walker, what about you? What's the what's the what is the night out? You know, it's still early. What is the night out? What are you looking forward to on your night out? Uh, your night off too. Uh, you don't have to work at Roseville Community Care, uh, the little emergency center or the little urgent care center. Uh, what are you looking forward to on this night off? Um. I think I'm people watching until most of the islands in one bar or another, and then I'll go out and look at the stars. Nice. All right. All right. Um, so I want to talk a little bit things you see that are slightly amiss. Um, you're not the only people from other institutions around the island who are uh here picking up a little bit of a it, taking an evening off get, enjoying it you also see sean cohen who, who normally works at the cabana uh, and you know tonight is a busy busy night at the cabana there is a there's a punk band playing a lot of people have come over from mainland county s simply for the show and that sean isn't working on a big night like tonight when he could make some extra cash uh, is a little unusual. Uh, well, I mean, and, uh, he did get attacked of, by the shark people, right? You know, he fortunately did not get bitten. So uh, mm. uh, he's, he's, he's been okay. Uh, but uh, Sean is sort of weirdly lurking in the corner at least I'm getting a slight echo, so I'm going to mute you if you don't mind. It, instead of yeah. Me. Okay. Uh, uh, but he's sort of lurking in a corner, uh, maybe just opposite Ward. Uh, only a little bit older than Ward, uh, but he looks, he's looking, not singing along, not looking like he's participating much in, in watching the show. It looks like he's watching a couple of people opposite uh opposite uh the piano sort of behind the piano player uh who are also not participating much they're looking at their watches they both have rolling bags with them and this is the 70s so usually wealthy people and flight attendants are the two people who have rolling bags in the 70s um and uh but hard case rolling luggage uh, with them as if they have gotten off the ferry and the person who was supposed to sort of show up and put their, you know, their, their luggage on a golf course and take them to gar cart and take them to where they're supposed to stay did not show up. So they sort of just drifted over to the screws turn for a drink while they're waiting. It's, it's the vibe they're, they're giving off. They do not look like they're relaxed or blending in at all. Uh, and Sean is watching them rather intently. Uh, uh, Ward, I know that uh, Walker and uh, 
Dennis have been looking out for Sean, sort of keeping an eye on Sean ever since the incident with the shark people that you heard about. Ward, what is your relationship with Sean? Is it is he someone you've met at all, or is he somebody that uh, you've not gotten to interact with much? Uh, or, or tell you tell me. I don't think he's someone that he's gotten to interact with much. I think he recognizes the name and maybe just like knows what the face looks like um, because of how much Walker and Dennis have spoken about him. Mm -hmm. But he's also, I feel like Walker has been known to tell tall tales and just say a lot of interesting things that coming from Ward's background, I don't know if Ward necessarily believes it all because it sounds kind of strange. Uh, even strange for Roseville Beach. And so he's wondering, he, he's curious about Sean, but not, um, but yeah, doesn't know if he believes in shark people that much. And is there anything about Sean that makes him especially compelling or disturbing to you? I think one of the things that makes him both compelling and disturbing is the fact that his eyes are really, really blue but Ward swear, could swear at certain times as, you know, maybe the lights are flashing a bit and the screws turn during a certain song that they're violet. Or maybe they're just really deep blue. Maybe it was just like the way the red light hit it or something for a moment that made it seem that way. Or, or, or was it? Ward's not sure. Um, and so uh, shortly after... Uh, the uh, the Roseville, or, or shortly after, uh, what I did for love ends, and and uh, the song from Company is "I'm Getting Married," right? Or getting married today. I'm getting married today. Uh, starts. You see, the people who are standing there, sort of with their luggage, awkwardly attempting to blend in sort of move towards the door and load up their luggage onto a golf cart. The golf cart is the Bracknell Lodge golf cart, but the person driving it is not somebody you recognize. And Sean immediately downs the last of his drink uh, and heads straight for the front door as they head out the patio door. Um, I think that Ward, this song is an absolute nightmare for Ward. Um, and as a oh, runaway no. groom, <laughs> as a runaway groom, uh, and I think he's sort of maybe had a bit much of this location and just downs the rest of his very sweet sugary alcoholic drink and decides, you know, he's here for experiences and is going to start trudging outside towards the front door after Sean. All right. What I would like to do is uh, we're going to take a second pause uh, and we're going to come back and pick up with a scene sort of in the middle of the action and sort of see what happens when the dice start flying. Uh, I will uh, we'll be back in just a moment. And we are back. Uh, welcome back, and uh, we are going to do a short split scene as our uh, three housemates move on to uh, three different but strangely interrelated little adventures over the course of the evening. Uh, before we get to a in, to a uh, a uh, ultimate scene, we'll we'll bring them back together. Uh, but we're going to start with a uh, Walker. And uh, Walker, you're headed out to uh, follow the people who left, uh, loaded up their bags on the uh, the Bracknell Lodge's uh, golf cart to uh, have everything sort of brought over to Bracknell Lodge. And uh, you were planning to uh, shift into crow form, Walker, you yep. tell me a little bit about where you're going to do that. Like, do, do you uh, do you sort of just dodge behind the building? Is that like, are, are how much how much of a risk are you taking of being seen as you shift into crow form? Um, I'm definitely the very least dodging behind the building. Um, I mean, 
Walker's aware of his surroundings, so he's not going to take stupid risks. But he's also relatively new to to the island, so it's entirely possible he doesn't know everywhere someone might be watching him from. And you're a country kid, right? You you kind of grew yeah. up in the country, yeah. So not necessarily used to like the fact that like a you know a boardwalk lane can look empty, and then all of a sudden somebody is stepping out of their house onto the lane. So there's always the yeah. You think you don't see anybody around, and uh, you shift and fly up, and you you know. Oh, and uh, I should put Lisa on screen. Uh, oh, that's not the opposite of what I wanted to do. Uh, we are back there. Here we go. Uh, so you're gonna jump up, uh, and uh, kind of dodge behind the building, and you have a good idea where they're going, so you don't have to keep like eyes on them the whole time, right? Uh, yeah, and it's not as if this golf cart is going to go all that fast. Right, right. So you can find a quiet little space to duck in, hop out. And the the sky is getting a little dusky, but it's still a bright sunset orange with that sort of like blue, uh, that sort of sharp blue color off to the east and the uh, the sharp orange color to the west. So there's definitely enough light left for you to uh, shift into crow form and sort of follow along. Um, and uh, as you shift into crow form, you're following along and you've got about, we'll call it like five or six minutes before you're afraid it might get a little dusky and dark. Uh, a, a little dusky and dark. Uh, Walker, you're flying along. You can see the Brecknell, and there's not many at this time of night golf carts out. And right. most of them are just taking people with their luggage to wherever they're staying. Um, uh, we talked a little bit off, off camera, but on camera, all the streets that look or things that look like streets in Roseville Beach are actually just boardwalks for, you know, for primarily for pedestrians, but those narrow little golf carts can get along pretty okay on them uh and so it's not, it's not like it's spot. a busy night or anything it's not like right, they're right. out of people who yeah that's odd especially once you get away from the once you get away from the center of town it's not like there's a there's tons of people on the out on the boardwalks there's more people coming to the clubs and bars uh but once you kind of get off to the hotel on the off towards the hotel on the edge of town it's a definitely quieter and calmer uh, mm -hmm. You follow along. You see them go into the big gate around the hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they get off at that point, grab their bags and go back in. And the, uh, they uh, open the, uh, the little place where they stash the golf cart, kind of, you know, kind of a little portion, a little secluded portion of the gatehouse. Um, you can see from above and uh, they stash the golf cart and, and sort of walk in the big front door of Bracknell Lodge. Now you can also see, and you've got a few more minutes where, before it gets a little dark, uh, you can also see Walker um, from where you are. You can definitely see uh, people at the pool area at the back of Bracknell Lodge kind of behind the lodge itself, uh, uh, lounging about. Uh, but it's not a busy Friday night, and the the like you would expect. You'd expect, you know, the season is starting to pick up. Friday yeah. night would normally be hopping at a, an exclusive resort in a, in a town like this. Uh, but it's actually really quiet. The whole lodge is pretty quiet. In fact, in fact several of the rooms don't even have lights on in them. Uh, and the other thing that Walker, you probably know that as a as a as a as a wear crow that uh, um, frequently when you fly over Bracknell Lodge, uh, most people are not wearing clothes. Right. It's a it's a clothing optional, uh, you know, resort. Everybody 
in the back is f not fully clothed, but they're wearing they're wearing bathing suits or uh, you know caftans, bathrobes, uh, which is not normal for the Bracknell at all. The Bracknell is is an exclusive clothing optional little little hotel resort uh, that normally on a Friday night would be booked out and uh, uh, all the rooms would be taken and most people would not be uh, uh, anybody not heading into town would be lounging about the pool or the hot tub or some other area back there uh, enjoying the fact yeah. that they could just relax uh, but everybody seems to be cooking out uh, lounging around the pool fully fully you know, dress for the beach, not for uh, the clothing optional resort. Uh, Do they look about, relaxed? About, they look, it's hard to tell from up there, but they look like they are in careful, they almost look like they're, they're gathered for almost, if they weren't in their swimsuits for a business meeting. There's about a, a, five people out back not counting the three who just came in the driver and the two others is there like a tree near the pool where i could just sort of perch and even if i can't see so good i'll be able to hear them that is a there is definitely a tree where you can perch now whether they would notice a crow landing in that tree. There's not a lot of crows on Roseville Beach, so uh, whether they would notice a crow landing in that tree uh, right as dusk settled on uh, hmm. is a is an open question. Do you want to do you want to try to sneak in and get close and not be noticed? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're going to flip over to the, if, if you look at the character keeper, we've got a rolling dice section. So you don't have to, uh, we're going to kind of build up a dice pool there for you, uh, yeah. Walker. Uh, you're going to start with 1d6 because you're a sleuth. You are, okay. uh, you are a character in this game, which means you're used to investigating and solving mysteries. You are adding one more because you're not injured or scared at all, much less yet. You, yet. Uh, you have at least one possible relevant background. If you can tell me what that is, do you think either of your backgrounds are relevant to this? It's okay to say no. Um, my background is. Uh, well, you, you can use being a crow like a background. Uh, oh, well, if being a crow is like a background, then yeah, because honestly, even if there aren't that many crows, who pays attention to the birds in the dark? Right? So you've got, that's three dice right there. Do you have at least one relevant skill? Uh, stunt flying? Hmm. I've got animals, stunt flying, and driving. Driving is just not relevant here. I'm not and sure. And I don't think animals yet. So no. uh, I think stunt flying might be better if you were trying to like get away or uh, yeah. like, something in air. So that's going to be three dice right there. I'm going to call this, though, a golden opportunity because you are in crow form and as you said who pays attention to the birds at least before anyone is dis discovers that there are birds who might be watching uh okay so uh, that and you don't have any help uh nope. so we're gonna do we're gonna go with uh and you're not saving an ally trouble or comfort from dire consequences yet so uh, no i'm, I'm helping them but as far as i know they're not in dire trouble uh so you I will let you know too that you are rolling for your goal to see how well you do, and I, you're not really at risk of injury right now. So let's say the other thing you've got to check, you've got to place a a token on is goal. Uh, you want to listen in. Uh, you might find something really scary, so you're going to place a die there, and additional clues. So you're going to have to place three dice that you roll of the of the pool. And how many dice did you pull together for this? I'm currently holding four. I four. think that's as much as I can get on this one. Yep. All right. So uh, let's throw those four dice and tell me how you do. Three, three, one, and one. Three, three, one, and one. Now, Walker, if you want to risk bringing one of your troubles in, uh, you can roll an extra dice. Oh, why not? Die. Yeah. Two. 
Oh no. So Walker, you're going to need to place four of those die on goal, scared, additional clue, and trouble. Okay. Well, I'm going to put one of the ones on additional clues since I'm not going to learn anything anyway. And that's a good place to put a one. Okay. Um, and you can discard any die you can't place, but they're all pretty low. So I, I, I... Eh. okay. So, uh, and that is goal, scared, and trouble, right? Goal, scared, and trouble are the the ones you need to place. Okay. Um, gonna oh. It's really interesting whether I put a one or a two on the trouble. That that yeah. is an interesting question. Um, it doesn't matter so much for goal or scared. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use a two or and a three there respectively, since it really doesn't matter which way that goes. Um. And I'm going to put a one on trouble just because it's more interesting that way. Uh, and what did you put on scared? Um, I put a two on scared and uh, actually, no, I'll put the three on scared and the two on goal. Okay. I'm not sure uh, if it makes that much difference because. Both of them, both of them under three are, are in, and scared is under four. Uh, yeah. I don't have anything over three. Um, luckily for you, being scared is not something that forces a, a change back for you. Uh, but let's start, uh, with, uh, the fact that as soon as you land, uh, someone who looked vaguely familiar from the air, um, looks very familiar as soon as you, as soon as you land agent Lane Davis, FBI, uh, immediately turns and looks directly at you and says, uh, well, I think we're being watched. Aren't we Walker? Uh, so you're scared, which means you have a, a scared condition called discovered. Okay. Um, and uh, you've been spotted and made and Lane Davis is right there. Uh, uh, Lane also adjusts sort of her caftan, and you can see that uh, right under the caftan on the bathing suit uh, is her hip holster, uh, where she has her snub nose revolver that she normally carries. Uh, why don't you change back there? Walker and come tell us what you're spying about or what you're what you what's got you so concerned that you're here to spy on us. Uh and they all turn to look at you, Walker, uh, as uh you are startled by being spotted. Um, but I think what we're gonna do now is uh shift over and check in with uh Ward, who is following Sean. Ward you saw Sean leave the bar rather or the screws turn rather decisively uh, in the middle of what I did for love or just right at the end of what I did for love while everybody else was hitting those notes with varying degrees of success. Yeah. Just as the, the marriage song came on. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you see Sean walk over to payphone, pop in, a quarter and uh tell somebody yeah they're here i'll keep an eye on them i know where they're going and then he turns to uh stock harbor harbor word um what are you doing oh hi i'm sean <laughs> uh hi um Ward? Yeah, uh Ward, you I think you know my uh my bungalow mates. Uh I was just, you know, drinking at the um screws turn 
And I, you know, they start, start playing a song and I start changing it. And you walked out and I'd seen you at the bar and it seemed like maybe something was, I, I don't know, you just seemed really decisive and, and, you're, and you're walking out and I, I thought that was kind of cool um, and different. And he, like he takes a couple steps closer. I, I, I am very cool, I like to think most of the time. Uh, I am I am a little I got a I got a thing I've got to get to though tonight uh so oh. I could uh, uh maybe oh, um. uh I he's like looking like it's suddenly very awkward oh um sorry I maybe I, I thought maybe um no I that's my uh and he like puts like a hand over his face and gets real red oh no 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 I I, I we should we should definitely hang out uh sometime soon. But I, I, I do have a thing I have to get to, you know, just a, a thing I'm doing for some friends. Oh, uh, maybe maybe I could help. What are you doing with uh, for your friends? Uh, I, 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 you know, it's it's a it's a really it's a really personal thing. It's a little there's some strange things involved, and I, I, I you know, it, it's I'm sure it's going to be really boring. Uh, it, maybe we could. Uh, now I want to give you a chance to talk him into this if you would like to. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I'm both charming and friendly. You are very charming and friendly, and uh, he's like, uh, I, you, I, I, I've I've seen strange things. Um, you know, like recently there was, um, and he like looks up and like makes direct eye contact with Sean's eyes. There was a this wispy kind of a violet eyed stranger who who pushed uh, Lady Bracknell. Um, and there was a wispy stranger who pushed Lady Bracknell. Yeah, mm -hmm. they had they had violet eyes. Oh, um, I'm gonna have you. I have not done this. Is one place I have not used this dice system for is interpersonal persuasion type stuff. Ooh, spicy. Uh, so uh, you were the first. Uh, so let's build your dice pool. Okay. Up. Uh. uh so I'm a sleuth. You're a sleuth. You a, a very charming one. I'm a uh, charming one. You're not injured or scared in any way, Ward, that would inhibit you. Uh, no. You're not injured or scared at all yet. No. Uh, do you have a relevant background? Do you think? Um. Let's see. I'm a sports hero and a clergy kid. Oh, I, I feel know. like sports hero. Like yeah. Some, like you know. Like I can. I'm could be. Yeah. I think that could be like assistive sort of in here. Um. Uh, He's also like, you know, you look like you know what you're doing. There's, you know, there's, you look like a, you have a little bit of an athlete look who, yeah, you, know, you can project a certain amount of confidence. Uh, and also, I'm hitting on him. <laughs> yeah, you're hitting on him. Yeah. Um, uh, so you have one, that's three dice right there. Uh, four. Four. Um, and, uh, You've got at least one relevant skill, and I think you've got that second relevant skill. So I think yeah. it's going to be five dice, which is – there's not really a thing for interpersonal injuries, but uh, I feel like we'll call that getting scared. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, because flirting with people, definitely it's scary. It's very scary and very new for Ward. Yeah. Um, He's trying so to let's, uh, let's, you're gonna, I'm going to have you place four of these dice. Uh, so let's roll your pool. Let's see how you do. Okay, that's some interesting dice rolls. I've got two fives, a four, and two ones. Two fives, a four, and two ones. Let's see you place those. Because you gotta okay. you got to place four of them. One on goal, one on scared, uh, one on additional clues. Actually, that's only three. You only got to place three of these. What was I talking about? You only have to place oh. three. Cool. Uh, I'll place five on goals, uh, uh -huh. four on scared, and five on additional clues then. Now, I will tell you, you can't place that four on additional clues and the five on scared because that will, unless you want to see what happens because you got scared of flirting. Oh, um, then I'll switch them. Yeah, okay. I'll go five scared, four on additional clues. Right. Okay. So the dice on these on the on the outcomes are a little bit different, so that we have a chance to play with the probabilities a little bit and make those mm -hmm. make some of those uh, uh, count. This is the Siren dice system for people who uh, or other kind of dice system. Big fan uh, of Siren. Love Siren. One of my favorite games. Uh, so you had a five on your goal. Mm -hmm. uh, 
a five on scared. On five on scared and four on additional clues. Mm -hmm. uh, See, so Ward, congratulations. You just flirted with somebody. <gasps> His fresh flirt. And they're not running away. Yep. So uh, uh, there's a little bit of relax there. Um, uh, and he sort of looks at you as like, I, uh, I, I just have to, I just got to, I need to run by Bracknell Lodge real quick and check on something. Um, do you want to, like, maybe you could walk that way with me and then I'll just, I'll just dip inside. Yeah. You know, real yeah. quick. Just to, I, just to check on something. I, the, I, you know, and then, then maybe like, Hey, you know, we can go to Rosie's or something. Yeah, no, I think I would love to go to Rosie's and like, you know, you can do whatever you're doing and I'll give you like a moment. I'll check with lady Bracknell, see how she's doing. Cause you know, I, you know, her injury oh, and everything. Oh yeah. 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 Um, so we could each do our own thing there real quick, give each other some space, but then like do our thing together at like Rosie's. That would be really cool. Rosie's is really cool. I, you know, my uh, roommate, Dennis, he, he bartends at Rosie's. And so the bartenders really like me there and I could probably get us free drinks. Yeah. Um, so uh, what do you talk about on the way over? We won't do the whole conversation, but what do you talk about on the way over? Um, gosh, I think in hopes of keeping him interested, Ward just spews everything he knows that's been weird about the island. So he talks about the monolith. He talks about... The, the shark people, supposedly, that that was a thing that he heard about from his roommates. He'll the talk. Shark people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, you know, the, the shark people in this. this uh, and, and every time he says the violet-eyed strangers, he, like, makes direct eye contact with Sean. Um, and, you know, the shark people that are there. And then he'll probably, like, make up something or two because he's trying to sound impressive and be like, yeah, you know, I heard, you know. Uh, we maybe have like a ghost or something that's like strangely haunting at the Fleur Manor. Sometimes I close up at night. And even though uh, I know the sisters are all downstairs having a drink by themselves and no one else is there, sometimes things move. Yeah. I think while you're talking is like, have you, did you ever, have you ever been out to Odd Island? No, I've never been. I've only been here for like a, a, like a few weeks and then, you know, settling into a place and getting my job. And so I really haven't had a chance to like explore much. Oh, um, oh, we shouldn't go out there. It's it's real boring. Oh, okay. Um, but but uh, it, even if it was, I mean, I bet it wouldn't be that boring if like we were there together. Like, can't make direct eye contact when he says that part, though. Uh, out of the corner of your eye, you think that Sean definitely turns at least a light shade of red. Uh, and. Uh, when he gets there, and this is about where we'll leave off and check in with Dennis, uh, he's like, "Hey, why don't you uh, try the buzzer? Ask for, ask for Lady Bracknell, yeah, uh, Gray, and then uh, I, I, I just gotta, I gotta duck around, yeah, go, the yeah, go, and, go uh, do check your thing, something. yeah, go check uh, on your thing. You, I'll... you hear him as you hit the door, the buzzer at the door, because uh, there's kind of that gate buzzer at the gatehouse for mm -hmm. the for the grit for the big lodge, uh, mostly just auditory." Uh, just mm -hmm. like a, uh, you hear him slide off the edge of the uh, of the boardwalk, uh, like he goes back away uh, from and slide mm -hmm. off the edge of the boardwalk. But uh, what the sound of him landing is definitely weirdly like something smaller landed on the sand than the the full size guy who jumped off the boardwalk. Huh is what you're hearing as the, uh, it's getting pretty dark now. Uh, Dennis, you're over at the screw's turn. Uh, Dennis, is Augustus the real name of the piano player or do you just assume that is the, uh, the stage name of the piano player? I have to assume it's a stage name because okay. I, like he doesn't strike me as an Augustus. He seems too far too like laid back for it, um, and it seems like he's probably just using that name to kind of raise his uh, you know cred credibility as a piano player. Nice. Okay. And this was this the first night you noticed how cute Augustus was, or have you had your eye on Augustus for a while? Oh, I've had him, my eye on him for a while. In fact, he probably remembers me as the guy who makes him play uh, "Close to You" by the Carpenters every other Tuesday. When they do pop night, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he goes on break, and you uh, are you are you just kind of intercepting him when he takes his uh, his kind of extended break or finishes out his shift? Oh yeah, I bet. Um, like he's probably like uh, like outside uh, smoking a cigarette or something, and I go uh, just pop over there and ask if I can bum one off him. Oh, uh, you can you can bum one if you have a light. Okay. Pull out um, a very nice uh, Zippo lighter and just uh, click it and uh, offer to light his own cigarette as well. Uh, he offers you a cigarette. Like uh, I, I, you, you have the advantage of me, Mister Close to you. I don't know your name, but uh, you know you hear me introduced what three, four times a week. Oh, um, maybe not that often, but uh, certainly I've been around enough to know who you are. You can call me Dennis. I, I Dennis, you act like I, I, I don't notice when my favorite customers come in. You probably like take that opportunity to like slide across the railing a little bit as like favorite customers. Do you have more than one? Well, you know, it's a busy, busy, busy beach, and but there's only so many people who are who are, you know, good tippers and and uh and uh enjoy the carpenters. And I certainly do enjoy the way that you sing that song that uh and- uh, brassy baritone that you bring to it is just the I, highlight of my week. I, having my baritone described as brassy is, is is certainly the highlight of my evening. Uh, also, you're one of the few people who doesn't repeatedly ask for "I will survive," uh, yeah, which is only really so interesting out. on the piano. Um, I was actually thinking that, um, and I want to run this by everybody before. Like it Mm -hmm. actually, if it were to actually happen. But um, I noticed that like there's this uh, antagonism with the police and Mm -hmm. uh, being that this is like set in like a, you know, kind of like supposedly utopic queer society. Like, I don't know, I'm obviously trying to cruise him, but if a police Mm -hmm. officer rolled by or something, that might be an interesting conflict. Otherwise I can just keep the skirting game going. Uh, So uh, generally the cops don't come out, but I think that uh, with everything going on, uh, you definitely could see, like a a weird instance of a uh, of a of a mainland county, or do you see a mainland county plainclothes officer? Because you know, that... frequently the plainclothes officers are not as plainclothes as they as they think they are. Well, and I used to be a political aide, so of course I would recognize a plainclothes officer. I used to deal right. with them very frequently. Uh well, and, and Augustus is is certainly very you know caught up in talking to you. It's like, well, I'm so glad you dropped by because uh you know my 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 friends who were going to come out and stay with me this or who were going to come out this weekend uh, and uh, drop in and visit had to cancel because the Bracknell Lodge decided to close for the weekend. I don't know what Lady Bracknell's thinking. It's it canceling all the reservations, dropping dropping all those customers, and having to. Uh, they asked if they could stay on my floor, but you know, I, I have smallest place, the little apartment. You know, being a piano player doesn't really make one rich. And that time you're seeing a plain clothes police officer just sort of circling the main part of town, uh, kind of like I think you've probably in this short conversation you've seen him sort of walk up the block, and then you can tell that he sort of like circled back around and came back up the block again. Like he's uh, trying to make a decision or maybe looking for something. Uh, uh, what are you doing there, uh, Dennis, as you uh, you see this this uh, plain clothes, possibly undercover or thinks he's undercover officer uh, strolling along? I think that I... Um... I'm very curious as to what uh, Augustus is saying, but um, Mm -hmm. it's always important to know what a police officer is up to. And so uh, what I do is I I probably fish. um, And I I don't know if this is something that um, maybe I have like a, a, like a, a, like a commonplace book or something like that, that I can like um, pull from my pocket. Um, And then I'm like, uh, I like Pat, Augustus on the shoulder for a second. I'm like, I will be right back. And then what I want to do is I want to like pretend like the officer has dropped the commonplace book and be like, excuse me, sir, you dropped this. 
and then he'll deny it, of course, that it's his, but um, mm -hmm. that will give me the opening I need to uh, be like, are you new here? <laughs> to talk to the, uh, to talk to the officer? Mm -hmm. um, all right, well, uh, you, you dart over to the officer, you, uh, you, uh, you hold out the book and say, you drop this, correct? So there's one role I do first. What are the pro what is the probability again that you are recognized? Do you remember? I will look that up real quick. Oh, I mean, it was in all of the gossip rags. So if this guy, you know, reads the, you know, it happens to read them as a guilty pleasure, or maybe his his mm -hmm. girl is like very um one of those people who wants to share everything that she's reading. I think that there's a, a good chance that I could be spotted. All right. you know, it might take a second to put like a face to a name, but right, right. Uh, why don't you roll a d6 here for me? Okay, that's a two. That's a two. Technically, it's one in six, but uh, you know, this is a police officer who's very interested in gossip. Uh, so I'm gonna bump that up a little bit, uh, especially uh, and you see his his eyes cross. And sort of, huh? And were you originally from the local area, or did you travel pretty far to get here? I think I traveled pretty far to get here. Uh, these are not my usual haunts. Okay, and but sort of, were you talking like a, a prominent congressperson or senator that you, or was it like a mayor? Uh, I like the idea that it was, was a senator. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, maybe from like, oh, let's just say Kansas, Senator from Kansas. Were you, were you in the district or, or were you in the district, uh, like staff or were you with the DC staff? I was with the DC staff. All right. Yeah. Uh, he looks at you as like, do many people recognize you around here? I uh, tuck the book back into my pocket and then just kind of like firm up a little bit. And I say, um, it happens from time to time. Although notoriety here is a little bit different from back home. Yeah, things I'm sure very different from back home. Yeah. Well, uh, huh. Uh, I don't, I didn't have a book with me. So uh, I don't know why you thought I dropped that, but uh uh, I am well, a, don't really have time to talk right now. I was looking for the Bracknell Lodge. wasn't quite sure how to get there. Oh, the Bracknell Lodge. Well, as a matter of fact, I know exactly where it is. I could potentially lead you there, although I've just heard that all of the reservations were canceled. Oh, I, uh, I have special arrangements. Well, um, as you may know, nothing's ever free here. So, um, uh, Let's say if I show you the way, you uh, tell me a little bit about what's going on here, because I can recognize a cop when I see one. I tell you what, why don't you just point me in the right direction? Oh, I'm going to have you roll for this one, if you don't mind that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what what why don't we uh you have a you're a sleuth you're not injured or scared in any way uh do you have a relevant background i mean um well i like i don't know is this a, a police officer who would respect somebody who worked in politics or possibly possibly uh, and what about skills? Oh, I mean, I have um, charming. I have uh, intimidating. I have subterfuge. Uh, <laughs> I, I think intimidating up. and subterfuge would be your best too, because you 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 did call him out. Uh, and also, you know, you're you're good at like sort of concealing what you're trying to you know actually get at. Does that sound about right? Yep. All right. Uh, not quite a golden opportunity. Uh,
So why don't you throw those? I think the only thing you're risking right now is uh, him trying to intimidate you back. So that's you're kind of risking scared. I don't think you're risking getting injured, though. Okay. Uh, so just to check, is that four or five because of the second relevant skill? Uh, that's going to be five. So cool. you're going to throw down five. All right. Oof, that wasn't great. Um, I have a four, two twos, and two ones. Do you want to risk putting one of your troubles in, getting one of your troubles in here? Yes. Uh, oh, wait. oh, cool. That was a five. Nice. Okay. Uh, why don't you place those out? Uh, you're going to go on goal, scared, additional clue, and trouble. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let me look at my goal, scared, additional clue, and trouble. Cool. Um, so I'm going to place my um, five on scared, so mm -hmm. I succeed without frightening myself. Uh, I'll place my four on goal, and then uh, I will place my two on trouble, and two. Uh, another two on additional clue. Okay. Uh, I'm going to introduce Augustus as a trouble. Uh, instead of uh, trying to drag another one of your troubles in, is that okay? That sounds good. Uh, so I think... And uh, what did you put on additional clue? Two. Two. All right. So we're not going to discover anything terribly. But uh, Augustus sort of invites himself along with you as you uh, come to the, uh, uh, as you uh, come alongside the the police officer. He's like, oh, is this a friend of yours? I say, um, no, uh, just, you know, uh, a uh, random passerby looking for his uh, looking for his digs. Well, uh, you know, uh, wh which direction is are his digs going? Oh, don't worry about it, Augustus. I I have this covered. Um, I'll just get him where he needs to go, and then uh, I can't wait to come back and hear your next number. Oh, I was going to take the whole rest of the evening off. I. I... You know, I, I my place is over by the Bracknell. If you wanted to uh, have a free drink instead of paying for one for once, I, I make a mean martini. And I just smile at him and I say, um, you know, that would be wonderful. I just have one slight errand to run. I need to check in on one of my roommates. Um, mm -hmm. Is it okay if I meet you in, say, 30 minutes? I suppose... But, you know, I am walking along Harbor Walk anyway. And uh, to be honest, your friend doesn't look very it's handsome, but not interesting. Oh, it's not. Uh, trust me. Uh, probably. Oh, he makes like a pun. He's like, um, oh, trust me. Uh, this gentleman does not make birds appear anytime he is near. Well, uh, my place in 30 minutes then. He, he he kind of he he rambles off the number and gives you his house name. Uh, uh, I'll leave the the patio light on. I'll keep an eye out for it. Uh, and I think with that, we're going to come back with one last quick scene. Uh, and uh, we'll take a quick break, and then we will uh, be right back. And we are back. And for our kind of our final demo scene today, our three investigators and their friend Augustus have been uh, unceremoniously locked into one of the hotel rooms at the Bracknell Lodge and not one of the nicer ones. This one just has a small double bed, a dresser, a small desk, and a window that seems to have been latched or, or nailed shut from the outside. Uh, 
uh, or or you saw them sort of drive a nail in that's supposed to keep you from opening the window. Uh, to make matters worse, Walker, the uh, clever weircrow, has a small gold chain wrapped around his neck that is supposed to keep him trapped in clo in a crow form uh, so that uh, he cannot shift back into mortal. So that uh, does mean, Walker, that uh, you can only communicate as a crow, uh, which thankfully crows can talk, though it is, it is, not, a, it is not a quiet, subtle kind of talking. Uh, and Augustus is there. Uh, you have seen them uh, kidnap Sean, who was, uh, at some point, they picked up what looked like a, an otter um, huh. and kidnap Sean. Uh, and a few minutes later, it looked like Sean. And they have tied up Sean and are putting him on a boat in the, in the, in the Bracknell Lodge's boathouse, since the Bracknell right there on right is right there on the harbor and occasionally people will bring their own sort of boats into uh or take a boat out boating from the bracknell without having to uh cross over over to the main ferry uh uh dock um and there you can hear them warming the boat's engine up and uh unmooring it bringing up the untying it uh what and this will be a pretty short we'll just go for about 10 minutes just to demo things but uh the three of you have been locked in this room with augustus and uh walker is trapped in crow form uh and you can hear the boat uh the the but you can't quite see it just out the window you see a little bit of light uh flashing but they left the light on in this room specifically so you couldn't easily look out the window because you're you're getting that sort of light on in the house makes it hard to look out the window effect uh what are you doing uh i think you are not restrained were... in any way but okay. the door is locked and the the light seems to have been switched on from the outside ward is just absolutely sort of pouty and it's just like this is this is this is terrible i thought i was about to have my first boy kiss and and now he an honor and all we can't we can't stay in here right something something is amiss we can just did you did you just say that out loud to the boy kiss part oh yeah or? oh yeah he's like <laughs> probably like making tracks in like the uh the floor here just like back and forth back and forth like trying to figure out like they're locked in this room oh sweetie you're about to kiss you were about to kiss today goodbye weren't you is what augustus says but, uh, Dennis just is like trying at the door and like trying to pull it open. And it's like, Ward, if you do something to get us out of here, I will kiss you myself. Just can you focus for five That's seconds? That's not exactly where I was going to go with that. But um, what if um, then he like gets very red when you say that you're like, you'll kiss him yourself because you're a, an older suave man. Uh, and he's like, okay, but I can, I can do that. Yeah. If, yeah. If we get us out, I can get us out. Uh, and he's going to like walk over to the door. And just prepare to attempt to just brute force through this door, like is angling his shoulder up. And yeah, it's gonna you're just gonna do this. you're gonna try to like break this door open, correct? Yep, he's gonna try and break this door open. All right. Uh let's assemble your pool. You're a sleuth. Yeah, I'm a sleuth. You have not been injured injured or frightened in any sort of way. Nope. Um uh, and uh you have, you are that, so you've got three right there because you've got that that high school you've got that high school athletics yeah. background. Uh, yeah. I also have a background. I have strength as one of my skills, mm -hmm. and I also uh, have brawling. Have a, I'm going to say strength, but not brawling because you're not okay. quite. You're not. Yeah, quite I'm not slug. dealing with someone. There's no fisticuffs yet, but uh, yeah, but strength. Uh, unfortunately, the door is not dodging and weaving and and doing yeah. anything else. You know. Uh, it's just it's just sitting there being very solid. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, so let's. Uh, uh, there is a chance you're going to injure yourself. Less of a chance yes. you're going to frighten yourself. There is always a chance you will find a strange, unusual clue. Yes. Uh, so I think that's three that you're going to need to place. And you're, okay. ro you're, you're rolling five, right? Uh, I think I'm rolling four because okay. I've got strength, clergy kid. I'm not injured, and I'm a sleuth. Right. Uh, that's right. So four. Four. Okay. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Thanks, Dice. That's three fives and a four. This is this is looking good. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you're, I assume you're putting that's five on the... Uh, on the uh, yeah, five's on them all, I think, because there's only three of them, right? Oh, uh, right, right. Uh, so you're not getting injured. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not getting injured, getting my goal, finding out information. Uh, you, uh, it takes a little longer. So you hear them start the motor in the, like you hear the motor starting, but you hear that sort of drifting effect as the, uh, the motor goes down into the water and starts to pull away. Cause it's taking a little longer. You have to, to push at it a couple of times and you hear Sean sort of muffled, like, you're going to regret, you know, uh, as they stuff the gag back into his mouth. Uh, get him. And uh, the door eventually flies open as you, you start to hear the boat move. Uh, it's going to take, it takes a minute for the door to, uh, it takes a minute for, you know, a few minutes for the, for the, the boat to clear a dock and you can't really like, you know, go super fast, but it, the time is getting to be of the essence. Uh, you, push that door open uh and right outside you find a large what looks like an owl feather uh maybe a falcon feather uh, and i think you you saw several as you turn you know as it opens and you see like out the window you see the flashing of several pairs of violet eyes coming from down around the dock uh, and you see this one owl feather. Um, what are the rest of you doing now that the door is open? Uh, flying out of there, literally. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, you, it will be hard to get away from the Bracknell, but there are lights on around the Bracknell for you to sort of navigate by. And you can see... Well, I'm not trying lights. to get away. I'm trying to see where the boat's going. Yeah. Uh, so you can see, A, the lights on the boat, and you can see the lights around the pool are still up. Uh, uh, so you, you have, and there's a big open window, weirdly, right outside uh, the uh, where they locked you in the room. Uh, and you, uh, you start flying. Uh, so you're flying out uh, and trying to see where the boat's going, correct? Yeah. All right. Dennis, what are you up to? Uh, I think at that point, I first of all, I probably give like Ward a big pat on the back, and I was just like, "We'll talk about your kiss later." But first things first, we have to rescue uh, Sean. And so I think I just kind of start like, "Well, first of all, are, is there anyone in the hallway? We are prisoners, so was there like a guard or no? Something? There was like, they seemed to, there was only about like seven or eight of them, and including the cop, and they seem to have all gotten on the boat." Cool. All right, then I think that I probably want to like dash toward like the the dock or like the you know try and see if I can find my way down there and like see what's going on as well. You know, like so you're gonna go straight through the middle of the hotel, right out the back door, and and, and try to dash dash to the dock and maybe catch it before and maybe ju make the jump onto the boat or just catch the boat or like what do you, what like once you get out the once you get out there, what is your hope if you catch if you not catch that far forward. Okay. I don't think I don't any of us have thought that far forward, to be yeah, honest. He doesn't strike me as the kind of person who would jump into the boat, but perhaps, I don't know, like wrecking the motor or something. Oh, nice. And I was thinking uh, of crapping on the eyes of the pilot if I could time it just right. Nice. Okay. Um, I think uh, Ward is running, and Sean is supposedly on that boat, and therefore Ward will jump. <laughs> uh, so let's, uh, we're going to start this chase with Dennis and Ward by, uh, I'll, I'll count D Ward is helping and, and, uh, we'll, uh, we'll end with this seeing whether Dennis and Ward make it, it will be, it will be really easy for Walker to make it onto the boat. Uh, since the boat yeah, is going to be drifting in the dark, uh, with lights on it's the question is, will Dennis and Ward make it just in time? For the big confrontation on the boat itself 
Uh, and Dennis, I'm going to have you sort of lead Ward in this, and Ward will loan a die to you. Uh, uh, cause you are both, he'll, he'll loan two dice to you, uh, cause you're both helping and you're strong, uh, uh, for making that final jump. Uh, and, uh, so let's count out your dice. You have your sleuth. You're not injured in any way. Uh, you are risking injury big time with this, uh, and, uh, possibly injured, you know, risking getting scared. There are some very weird things going on here. Uh, possibly learning additional clues. That's four dice you're going to need to place. Uh, Dennis, uh, do you have a background that helps you here? I do I'm not, not seeing it unless you can. Yeah, yeah. What yeah, do no. you have? One. Do you have a skill that helps you here? Uh, stubborn. <laughs> not really. I think. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I I like stubborn because it fits so many good situations where you're just sort of like barreling through. Uh, do you have a second them. skill you think? Uh, no, definitely don't. All right. Yeah. No, nothing else here helps. Any way uh, I could help? I think you're already in bird form and you're already sort of up. So I don't know if, if okay. you know, you, you've already got help from a, from a, from a, from a housemate. So I think that's, that's good. Uh, that does give you like five dice to roll, right? Uh, six. I have, I'm holding in my hands. Right. So I'm, you're old. Uh, aren't injured one no wait, no i don't have the background that's right um so i only have the skill so that's five yeah all right so uh let's let's roll those roll those all right oh no okay cool uh two fours two twos and a one uh and this is gonna be one of those times where like as the gm comes close to the end of the session they may tell you, you no longer can roll a trouble die because Try, at some point, there's too many troubles on the table. Uh, so let's place those, Dennis. Uh, where are you placing them? Okay, so I have to place four, right? And that's the goal, injured, scared, and additional clue? Uh-huh. And anything okay. that affects you from injured or scared may also affect ward. Mm, okay, well... Uh... All right, so I'm going to place a four in goal. Okay. I'm going to place a uh, four in injured. Uh, and then I'm going to have to dump a two into scared and a two into additional clue. All right, so that keeps you from getting injured, right? Right. And Ward was going to make that jump into the boat, correct? Yes. Uh, and were you going to make that jump as well? Dennis, now that you have the ch the chance, you're close in there. You're you're close to it, uh, or are you prepared to do something else? You see Ward making that jump. But, oh, um, I don't think I'm going to jump into the boat. I think that I'm going to probably try to like tie it up or something. Like loop, like get a loop, get a get a. So, all right. So you're standing there with a rope, and you see. And this is where I think we will fade into our, our cliffhanger ending uh, for this demo. Uh, you see, as you sort of get the rope ready to throw, Dennis, like to kind of catch them, you see Ward bolt and, and make that leap uh, land on the back of the jet back. And suddenly both of you realize you're all separated and none of you have backup. And that is the scared condition I will leave you with as we go into this uh cliffhanger uh as a uh, ward lands and sees sean tied up on the back of the boat uh as a a bunch of very wealthy looking people a federal agent and a local cop all turn to look at you ward uh and i think that's where we'll leave it uh thank you all and uh we'll wave at the audience uh Guys, thank you all for watching, and uh, I hope yeah you'll consider backing the the Roseville Beach Kickstarter, uh, which you can see where we in the notes, and uh, you can see the the address right down there at the bottom. Uh, sadly, blocking Daryl's name, I just realized. Uh, and uh, thank you all for joining us, and uh, it's been a great chance to do a demo for you, and uh, we hope to talk to you later. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.